Hey everyone, today we get the story of Jacob's dream. When the sun had set, Jacob took one of the stones at that place and put it near his head, and he lay down there. He dreamed and saw a raised staircase, its foundation on earth, and its top touching the heavens, and God's angels were ascending and descending on it. Suddenly Yahweh was standing on it and saying, I am Yahweh, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are living. Your descendants will become like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the east, west, north, and south. Every family of earth will be blessed because of you and your descendants. I am with you now. I will protect you everywhere you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done everything that I have promised you. And when Jacob woke from his sleep, he thought to himself, Yahweh is definitely in this place, but I didn't know it. And Jacob made a vow. If God is with me, and protects me on this trip I'm taking, and gives me bread to eat, and clothes to wear, and I return safely to my father's household, then Yahweh will be my God. This stone that I've set up as a sacred pillar will be God's house, and of everything you give me, I will give back a tenth to you. So this is the first actual encounter in the story between God and Jacob. You know, God's been talked about a lot, uh, but this is the first time God actually shows himself and says something to Jacob. And here we see that the covenant blessing, the blessing of Abraham, has been passed to Jacob, not Esau. And we might have a lot of questions, right? Was, was God fooled by Jacob's disguise earlier? Well, probably not. Was God forced into this because Isaac gave that blessing? Well, we don't have to think that. Had God already decided this? I don't know. Genesis, like I said, is... is pretty vague a lot of times, but as I said before, God's faithfulness is not dependent on human faithfulness. That should probably be our main takeaway. Really what I want to think about is Jacob's response to God's show of faith, because Jacob does not seem very faithful, right? We re he receives this unmerited blessing from God, very unmerited, I would say, and then he offers a very conditional service to the Lord, right? If God does this and this and this and this for me, then Yahweh can be my God. Maybe he's trying to steal a blessing from God too, right? Trying to get as much out of it, even though God has already said he's going to do all those things. How do we do the same thing though? Try and make deals with God, right? If you do this for me, then I'll do that. Maybe we don't always say it as explicitly as Jacob does, but I know we tend to think that way. I know I do. God can't be controlled despite our best efforts. Maybe that's even what, God, what Jacob is doing here when he tries to say, this is God's house. Right? I'll make this a house for you, Bethel. We don't make God show up. The best, all that we can do is to name the places where God shows up. I mean, isn't God present in all places? Now, sometimes there are these kind of thin places where heaven and earth, the barrier tends to break down, but God's not limited. Who knows where God might show up? God might show up in a very obvious way like he does for Jacob, but most often seeing God is going to just require having eyes to see, to have a heart that is open to awe and wonder and mystery. That's where we might experience God's blessing.